Hey hi everyone, uh, I'm doing this video as a follow up to my video on questionnaire data entry in SPSS. Um, I would have never guessed that that video would be my number one po popular video of all my videos. I guess uh, once we've entered our data we go our separate ways. Um, but because of its popularity I've decided to uh, do a follow up video uh, which I address the common questions uh, asked to me in the uh, latest session I had with my students. Uh, reading briefly, um, ordinal variables go from a scale of 1 to 7. Can I treat it as scale? Okay, let's address, address that one. Alright, this question has also been asked on, uh, on the YouTube. Um, so let's give you an example first what that means. I've got this data set. Okay, a massive data set. So it might your data might look like something like this after data entry. And yeah, let's have a look. So I've got here a level of education of father. So it goes from primary education, basic, secondary, vocational, blah blah. And it's quite a, well in this case it goes to the scale of what of uh, up to six. Okay, now. So this is ordinal because there is an ordering of the data here. Here it's uh, the numbers, as the numbers increase it means that they've got a higher level of education. But it's ordinal. The thing is when you have an ordinal variable, an ordinal variable is a bit like a Jekyll and Hyde thing. So it can take on, sometimes it takes on the, it can act more like a, um, a categorical variable and sometimes it can be used as a continuous variable. It really depends, as I told my students, it all depends on what type of analysis you want to do. How is it going to enter your analysis? Um, in regression, if you're going to, if you have an ordinal variable you want to use as a dependent variable, and that ordinal variable has a long scale, say five or greater than five, you can pretty much treat it as scale. All right, in other words, continuous. Um, and if you need a bit more information, we can treat it as what I call interval uh, variable, interval type. Okay, so basically, the longer the scale, the more kind of um, acceptable it is to be able to treat it as continuous. If we want to use it in regression as an explanatory variable, it's still the same. So the longer the scale is, the more kind of re uh, reasonable it is to treat it as something that's scale. However, if you've got something which has got a long scale, um, say you've got a Likert scale from 1 to 7 or even 1 to 10, um, it's plausible that you will have maybe many v values uh, which take a very small number of, uh, of observations. In other words, people you'll get many boxes which are not ticked because your scale is so long. So you can imagine if you've got a scale from 1 to 10, uh, a lot of people might tick close to 1 or high values like 8, 9, 10 but miss out the middle values. So in that case if, you, if you're using it as a regression it's still fine but if you're trying to do it, use it to do something like cross tabs you're going to find that that's not going to be fine and in cross tabs of course uh, since cross tabs deals with uh, categorical data so you've got no choice here you can't treat it as continuous um, and you've got many boxes which are not ticked you're going to likely to have to recode to collapse that what they call collapse group so instead of having 10 scale from 1 to 10 you have uh, you break it down into groups say three groups maybe 1 to 3 4 to 7 8 to 10 something like that so after all that, I just want to say yes, an ordinal variable, just know it's like a Jekyll and Hyde, you can treat it as um, continuous if the scale is very long and you're doing something like regression. If you're doing something like cross tabs, you need it in um, uh, categorical form. And then if it's very long, you're probably going to need to collapse your, your categories into fewer. So in that case, you need to view my video on recoding into different variables. Right, that's the first question addressed. Let's see what else I've got. Is it possible to see labels instead of coding? Okay, that's a really good question. I, I forgot to 
might do that in my first video. Is it possible? Yes, because suppose uh, I don't see this. Let's go to data view. All right. So I'm faced here with a whole list of numbers. Uh, if I'm entering data for the first time ever, I might feel uneasy about seeing all these numbers. I don't know if I've kind of coded it um, along doing it along the right, right, right lines of whether I made really a mistake unless I look at these numbers very carefully. Well, if you look up here, this is a nice little button here. It's got an arrow pointing to a number and a pointer letter because that's toggling between uh, value coding and your labels. So if I press it, watch what happens. There. So what's happened there is like whatever has been coded turns into labels and then you toggle back to the code. And those numbers which stay as numbers, presumably they are scale. Look at this. The, these this column does not change when I press it. But for example, yeah, like this guy does. See, so this is categorical. All right. So that's a nice way just to see whether you're, if you want to kind of flip back and forth between the code and the labels. Um, just to recap, the labels, if we go to variable view, the labels is here. It's kind of the full name of whatever your variable is. Okay, so that's the second one. Third question, I want to move a variable up the list. Is this possible? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, variable view. Right, so I've got a variable view here. This is actually the, what we're looking at here is the social survey data for U European countries. Uh, we go down here and wow there's 672 variables well it's not likely unless you're doing a massive PhD that you're going to have that many variables say just out of uh, randomly we want to move this variable to the top how do I do that what you do oh hang on I don't know if I know say I want to move this TV tot all the way to the top move it to row one how do you do that you can take hold of it, so uh, left click on 7, uh, just uh, pull your mouse up to the top, you can see that little um, white square, I'm pointing on my finger but you can't see it. Um, so now I'm on row 1, I let go and see what happens, oh no, row 2, see what happens. There, you can see it's just moved up there. Okay, uh, so I want to drag it down, oops. If See, I want to drag it back like this. Okay, so you want to press on the value. You don't want to pre be pressing on the here or, the, or any other columns because otherwise it won't light up. So it's got to light up the whole row. Then you know you've got it. And you can see a, a no entry sign. That means you've got got hold of it, and then just drag it to where you want and drop. Say you want to kind of just along that line, just. Uh, Say you want to insert a variable right in the space, you just on set on on the other number, on the row number, you right click this time, insert variable, and if we press insert variable, there you go, a variable appears, so type in new var. Like that. Okay. I want to undo that so I right click and I uh, clear. Good. Right, next. I have loads of variables. Is there a quicker way to reach the data entry for my variables? As I said, we've got over 600 variables here. Say I want to kind of reach this 404th one, which is called this. Um, if I go to data view, I'm going to have to drag this to the right, and it could God, give me a headache when I'm searching for it. You know, your eyes will just go all go bog eyed looking at for your variable. So, is there a quick way to access? Yes, there is. Say I want to access this 405th variable, which is called that thing. What you do is just double click on the row number. Double click like this. It takes you straight to it. See, and that's for any variable. I'll do it for another one. A bit like magic, this. Uh, let's say this one. I O A C P T T P. Double click. It takes me straight there. Okay, so that's a nice feature. I'm using data that's more than one type of missing value. Please explain. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, final question. Uh, re recall in that video I talked to you about missing values. 
in that video I taught you just how to enter a missing value you know I said enter something like in the, where it's radio button click here type 999 okay and then that's fine but here why have you got range plus one optimal discrete missing values what on earth does it mean low 77 to high 99 well this means that any value they've done this because they're saying that any value they code as between 77 and 99 will be classified as missing so you might be saying why on earth have we do, would would we need to have so many different types of missing values because surely a missing value is missing yes you can you can that that's a that's a sensible answer and that's a, would be an acceptable answer you don't need to have several entries you don't have to kind of distinguish between all the missing types but let's see what what they've done here all right cuz they've got these types because 77 they're saying is refusal to answer the question 88 meaning don't know 99 meaning no answer so when we're doing our in the first video when I showed you how to just do a missing value we, we, we meant it as you no know, there's no entry no answer for whatever reason but they've kind of broken it down um, I mean I don't know why you would need to do this is uh, it, it just gives it just gives more room it just gives you more work so typically you don't need to do this you know I, 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 um, I don't send you reason to kind of uh, split it down to various groups but the just know that they will all be classified as missing so in any analysis don't worry it won't enter 77 or 88 uh, into your into your uh, into your analysis okay so I hope that's cleared everything up um, there, there are loads of questions as well to come out of our session uh, student session with uh, to do with recoding and I might do a follow-up a video to that um, you know I tend to do videos where I see uh, a lot of students um, looking and indeed liking the video because that shows there's an interest for that subject um, and I guess at this time of year there's a lot of students uh, I mean February stroke March by the way a lot of students um, doing projects so good luck guys and you know once you've entered your data I know you all go your separate ways so um, maybe some of my other videos can help bye then